Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to continue our discussion of the oldest planet we've discovered so far known as Methuselah planet, and we're going to find out how it was created and how it came to be. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So if you haven't watched the previous part where I actually explored this particular planet using Space Engine, check it out. The, here's the link, click on it, watch the video, and then come back. But today we're basically go are going to talk about how this 12.7 uh, billion year old planet was created and uh, how it came to be and what happened in that particular globular cluster. So let's actually create a new system here. And we're going to basically create the M4 globular cluster, or at least some kind of a randomly generated cluster looking thing, by essentially pla placing a few stars here and there at a distance of a few light years away from each other. And so here you can kind of see that we have a bunch of stars together, clumped together. All of these stars have actually been created around the same time, approximately 13 billion years ago. And these stars are essentially part of a very big cluster known as Messier 4 or M4. Now, deep inside this cluster, um, a star was born. Actually, no, two stars were born. One was a slightly smaller star similar to our sun. And there it is right there, Methuselah star. It actually does have a name, and the name for this particular star is PSR B1620-26. Uh, and uh, we would designate it as B because it's the second star. But And then there was another star, much bigger, um, possibly similar to Spica right here at uh, approximately over maybe 10 to 15 masses of sun. We're going to launch, launch it in this direction. And we're going to name it... Methuselah Neutron Star. So it's going to be flying toward uh, the smaller stars, sun-like star, and at some point in the future they're going to meet. Now, while this f star is flying toward Methuselah Star, this is a much larger star here, um, we're going to maybe make a, a few planets around it, and one of, the, one of those planets is probably going to be very massive, similar to Jupiter, and so this is an actual solar system. But because this is a much larger star, it's going to actually get destroyed, it's going to die sooner. So what we're going to do is, we're going to explode it. So it, it goes supernova, basically. And this supernova, because it's in the vicinity of other stars, is very likely going to kill off any life that may have been existing on these other stars. But anyway, so this supernova happens, and what's left behind is a neutron star. Hopefully. There we go. No, that's not a neutron star. We need to make it smaller. Let's make it smaller. Okay, so there it is, uh, Methuselah Neutron Star, also known as PSR B1620-26A. Uh, now, this star is going to be flying toward the uh, smaller sun-like star, and it does have a partner. It has a gas giant around it, or obviously more than one probably, but there's one, at least one that's very massive. And uh, the supernova at some point is going to disappear, and what we'll be left with is essentially a leftover of a star, a neutron star. It's going to be relatively dead by the time it gets to uh, the smaller sun-like star, and it's going to basically become simply a very dense object with, without any pulsating. So time has passed, probably a few hundred million years, supernova has subsided, and at some point the neutron star is going to pass relatively quickly. Uh, the neutron star this star right here is going to pass relatively close to the other star, Methuselah star, and going to basically capture it. And because this star is a little bit more massive than the other star, they're going to make a binary system. As this happens, the neutron star is going to lose its partner, that's going to become a rogue planet and fly away into the abyss. But the other planet that we've discovered, the planet is about 12.7-ish billion years old, also known as Methuselah planet, is actually going to stay in its orbit that, and is going to be completely undisturbed by this event. And it's going to become the first um, circumbinary planet that we discovered. In other words, it's the first planet that we discovered that orbits two stars. Kind of similar to uh, the infamous scene from uh, Star Wars, where Luke Skywalker looks into the sky of Tatooine and sees two stars. Here, however, the stars are very, very different. Now, I don't know if it's going to happen here. 
I tried my best to make it more realistic, but chances are they're not going to assume a stable orbit. So we're going to have to cheat a little bit and make them have an orbit. Let's see what happens. Yeah, they didn't really... they didn't get an orbit. And as a matter of fact, we lost the other planet and the other star. So let's, uh, let's do this manually. And place the neutron star in orbit around the sun-like star. So then, essentially, this is how this particular system was created. The planet, Metacella planet, is still somewhere there, still orbiting around the system. And uh, basically, this is how it stayed for a few billion years. But then, because this is actually a star similar to our um, sun, this star became really old and with time expanded and as it expanded it essentially started to send out some of its material to the neutron star and as the neutron star received this material and we can kind of simulate this by maybe placing them a little bit closer just to kind of make this a little bit more realistic and there we go. This is what I was waiting for. The other star started to throw out some of the material to the neutron star. And as the neutron star started absorbing this material, um, it started to spin up, it started to pulsate, and it became a pulsar. So this pulsar will stay in this area for many, many billions of years. And this star is going to eventually become a white dwarf. And this is actually what's going to happen very soon as we lose more and more mass. So at some point in the future, after about 12 billion years or so, this will become a Metusella white dwarf. And so here's the white dwarf and the neutron star orbiting around one another. And around the system, at a distance just over 20 astronomical units, or a little bit farther away than distance from the Sun to Uranus, orbits Metocello planet. So this right here is the oldest planet we've discovered um, in our galaxy, so far at least. And this is the system where it's located. And like I said in the previous video, it holds quite a lot of records. Records for uh, being the first circumbinary planet we discovered, records for being the oldest planet, and also just records for being such an unusually cool system with a white dwarf and a pulsar. So all in all, this is actually a pretty exciting system. Now, one thing I'm missing from this picture though is my neutron star is not really pulsating. And so we're gonna see if we can maybe, just maybe try to turn it into a pulsar. And to do this, what we're going to do is, well, let's actually first erase this star from here. We're going to just actually create this from scratch. We're going to add um, Spica. Then we're going to make it go supernova, and now I think there's going there's gonna be a button here somewhere to make it uh, to change it into a pulsar. And here is the button right here, make pulsar. So let's see if this works. It gives us a humongous magnetic field, and uh, we're going to have yeah, there you go. We're going to have magnetic field and the jets. That's what I was looking for. We're going to do it supernova now, and look at that. Look at this beauty. A magnificent pulsar and a white dwarf orbiting around one another. Now imagine receiving these radiation jets or these super powerful uh, light jets uh, basically aiming directly at you as you're living on that metacellular planet. That would basically kill anything, that would destroy absolutely everything and very likely strip the planet of atmosphere in a few years maximum. These are extremely powerful and we can see them from far far away including of course our planet Earth. So, all in all, this is how this system was born, this is what's in this system, and this is why it's actually a pretty cool place to hopefully observe and maybe even visit one day. But, you know what, that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to show you how this system was created, what is actually located in the system, and just give you an idea of why Metacellar Planet is actually a pretty cool planet to begin with. Anyway. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn to video games. Anyway, space out, see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. And look at how beautiful this looks from a distance, absolutely incredible.